want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, I want to welcome you. My name is Susan Tomaski. I'm chair of the board of the Columbus Regional Airport Authority. And on behalf of the board, our president and CEO, Elaine Roberts, we welcome this fabulous crowd here today to celebrate the renaming of our airport in honor of one of Ohio and America's greatest heroes and citizens, John Glenn. I'm joined here today by several of my colleagues from the board, Frank Cipriano, Liza Kessler, Kathy Rancier, Dwight Smith, and Terrence Williams. And of course, I want to offer a very special welcome on behalf of our board and Elaine to Senator Glenn, his wife Annie, and his children David and Lynn. Thank you so much for being here today. You know, it's been a bit of a challenge to imagine what more can be said about a man as inspiring as John Glenn that hasn't already been said by people like Presidents Kennedy, Reagan, Obama, the Walter Cronkites and Tom Brokaws of the world, military leaders, and millions of ordinary Americans are who, who are his friends, neighbors, and admirers. But we're going to give it a try. It's no secret that our board takes great pride in our airport. We revel in its rich contribution to the history of aviation, and we look forward with excitement to its future role in the growth and prosperity of our community and our state. So it's completely fitting that our airport's name and its future will be associated with someone whose life achievements span one of the greatest moments in human flight and an enduring lifetime of contributions to improving the lives and the future of people in our community, our state, and our nation. So let's take a minute to look at that fabulous video screen and reflect on Senator Glenn's accomplishments. Though his accomplishments are unprecedented, his values remain unchanged. He worked for and achieved the very best in himself, and at the same time brought out the best in the rest of us. And when he was eight years old, he and his father were traveling to Cambridge, and they passed a little grass airport, and there was a barnstormer parked there, and his father took him up in an airplane ride. Since that ride, he really got hooked on the idea of flying. During his time as a test pilot, he concocted a plan to fly the first supersonic journey from coast to coast in the United States. He came up with that idea, did all the planning himself, made the arrangements for these tankers to refuel from these guys, and made a supersonic flight across the country. It implants John Glenn in the American consciousness, and you could just see how this leads right into his being accepted as a Mercury astronaut. It took that great character of his to step on board Friendship 7 and to fly it into space because he didn't really know if he was coming back. When you think of the first thing he said on his launch, Oh, that view is tremendous. Everybody's waiting for some, you know, holy smokes or, you know, is everything going right? And now he's, he's sightseeing. Friendship 7 uh, can see clear back a big cloud pattern way back across toward the Cape. Beautiful sight. Friendship 7 splashed down in the Bahamas at 2.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The spacecraft had flown over 75,000 miles, and the man who brought it safely back to Earth became an instant national hero. He enters into politics in January of 1964 as a Democrat for the seat in the Senate. At first time out, I lost. And uh, it was a, a bitter pill, but I lost in the primary. And then I had to decide, was I going to keep, keep at this and, and uh, try to run for the Senate later? And I did. Now an elected official, 
Senator Glenn approached his work with the same dedication as he had in previous careers. In the Senate, what he took up, they weren't the issues that rewarded special interest groups. I mean, nuclear non-proliferation, is there two or three more important issues? Probably not. He really spent a lot of time trying to reduce the threat of nuclear weapons. Uh, he was a scientist, so he could not only talk about nuclear weapons, but he could talk about the technical aspects of nuclear weapons. He was just consistently on that issue. On March 10, 1978, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Act was signed into law, preventing the spread of nuclear weapons and technology. It has remained a staple of U.S. policy to this day. At the age of 76, with a Senate career spanning 23 years, Glenn began to see his time in public office coming to a close. On the 35th anniversary of his historic Friendship 7 flight, he announced his retirement. In January of 1998, coinciding with the senator's final year in office, NASA announces that John Glenn will be returning to space. On behalf of the entire launch team, you and the crew Discovery have a great mission. Thank you very much, sir, and Discovery's crew is definitely ready to go, and uh, we would like you to proceed. Godspeed, John Glenn. T minus 10, 9, 8, we have a go for engine start. 5, 4, Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery with a crew of six astronaut heroes and one American legend. Maybe the most important thing about the whole flight was that it brought the nation's attention back to space. We, we become blasé. It, looked, it was too easy. And, uh, oh, okay, yeah, there goes another shuttle. Well, there, there goes another shuttle with John Glenn. Roger, the amount of pride I had, Republicans and Democrats all high-fiving each other, you, you think that we had gone up. I let the record show that John has a smile on his face and it goes from one ear to the other one and we haven't been able to remove it yet. System engines burning at the aft of the shuttle. Discovery now traveling at 650 miles per hour. After spending nine days in space and completing 131 more orbits than Friendship 7, the wheels of Discovery touched down on the runway at Kennedy Space Center. We started redefining the age that we became seniors. I saw people 20 years younger saying, wow, and they're suddenly feeling even much younger watching that because it was kind of like, John Glenn can do that. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? The people in the National Archives recommended that we put our artifacts and all these records here at Ohio State University. And out of that came an interest in our first effort here, which was an Institute of Public Service and Public Policy. And that developed then into the Glenn School of Public Affairs, which we have here now. Our motto, I think, is a good summary of the whole thing, is to inspire citizenship, develop leadership. Those are two pretty good things. We were the nation that did the research, that learned the new things first. And with an educated citizenry, uh, a little investment of, wow, we just led the whole world. And I think the young people today going through it have tremendous opportunities to be involved with that. Fifty years after his historic space flight and a lifetime of unprecedented accomplishments, the character of John Glenn remains virtually unchanged. If we can uh, inspire some of our people in the public service and, and civic engagement, just being involved, I, I'm not talking about encouraging everyone to run for public office, but uh, I think our nation will prosper almost directly, proportionally to the participation of all of our people. And even though our, our system has many, many problems, and they, we do, as long as we have our young people interested in what's going on, the nation will go ahead. And I think that the country's going to be in good hands in the future.
So we have so many people to thank for making today's events possible. Uh, here at the airport, I particularly want to thank Dave Whitaker, Angie Tabor, Condi Tracy, Kathy Whittington, and other members of the airport staff who put together this excellent event and who ensured that we're going to have something pretty spiffy up there to unveil in a few minutes. Uh, but of course, the credit for today's celebration starts with the leader of a bipartisan legislative effort that began in the Ohio House of Representatives, quickly passed the House, and with the assistance of Senator Faber, the Senate, and was signed by our governor with the full support of the administration. We're honored to have with us today the, uh, some of the key actors in making this legislation a reality, and I'd like to start by introducing the gentleman who led the charge for the renaming legislation, House Speaker Cliff Rosenberg. It was a real pleasure to work with you on this, uh, Speaker Rosenberg. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you. Thank you uh, to everyone for hosting uh, this event here today and giving me the opportunity to speak about a great man, a true legend, and that is uh, Senator John Glenn, and I'm extremely proud to be a part of it. Uh, this was nothing short of a team effort, and I have to first start by uh, acknowledging a very dear friend of mine, uh, Jack Kessler, and I'd ask Jack to step, stand up and be recognized because it was Jack who, absolutely. Jack and I have monthly meetings, and Jack came to me and he said, you know, well, how great would it be to honor a true American hero and do something great for our state by naming uh, Port Columbus, John Glenn Columbus International Airport? And I said, you know what, it's a fabulous idea and we'll get to work on it. And it was through that uh, ability and the, the host of folks on this stage and the ability to work with the port uh, board here, which I give great thanks and appreciation to, to uh, Commissioner O'Grady and his board of commissioners, Mayor Ginther, uh, Elaine Roberts, of course, and uh, also Susan, uh, to have such uh, so many folks working together in tandem uh, to make this happen is truly, I think, indicative of the man we serve here today. Now, there's the Ohio story. There's the American story, and there's the love story. And I think everyone knows that there would not be John Glenn without Annie Glenn. Now, I don't want to get in trouble with the senator sitting behind me. He has his cane, but she truly is a girlfriend. And uh, I appreciate my conversations with Annie and John. And, I can remember my first time meeting with the Glens was when I was first, uh, just almost a month before being sworn in as Speaker of the House. And first I was in awe that he would even spend 10 minutes with me, but more or less uh, spend over an hour and a half with me. And of course, Annie ensured that we had plenty of cookies uh, for the event. But I'll never forget <clears throat> the Senator's uh, message to me, and that was to ensure that uh, your focus is on the people that we serve, not about politics to make sure that no matter what we do, we look at doing things for the betterment of society. And uh, Senator, I hope you know that uh, I continue that charge and continue to listen to that advice, and I'm greatly appreciative of all that advice. And because of that, I think that's what you see here today as a result. This is an effort on a team level, and I can't be more appreciative. And what this is really about is like this young man over here, Josh, who's all dressed up, ready to go, uh, to space. Look at him. I think this is great. Josh, wave at everybody. <clears throat> this is about this special city that hosts our state capital, Columbus. It's about the citizens of our state, and it's about a great legend and a great man. And as people pass through the halls of this airport, whether it's for business or a family trip, or whether you're passing through, It'll spark innovation and an ideal of the greatest American dreams possible, that we can and we will do anything that is within our power as long as we work together as a team. And I know that as folks pass through there, they will remember that great American legend and icon, John Glenn, and keep that spirit of innovation and adventure, the spirit of citizenship as he cares so much about in their minds as they get to pass through this great city and through the halls of this airport. And today, uh, as we recognize this great honor, I just am so thankful to all the folks that put 
participated and played a special part in this. Senator Glenn, congratulations. This is a very befitting honor, and to both you and Annie, Godspeed. Of course, another qu critical step in the path to this uh, was the support of our administration and of Governor Kasich, who signed the bill into law. And on behalf of the governor and herself, I am honored to introduce Ohio's Lieutenant Governor Mary Taylor. Please join me in welcoming her to the stage. Thank you. Well, good morning and thank you. It's certainly an honor to be a part of this great event today. I think it's important that we have events like this so that we can honor and pay tribute to our real life American heroes. And of course, we all know John Glenn is not only an Ohio hero, he is a hero for all of our country. No one fits that definition better than John Glenn. He flew combat missions in two wars over foreign soil. He was a test pilot for the United States Navy. And of course, as we all know, and every American student knows, he was the first American to orbit the Earth when he circled the globe three times in 1962. Obviously, John Glenn's career was marked by danger, and that was all before he entered politics. As Lieutenant Governor, it's one of my favorite things to do to have the opportunity to speak to young Ohioans. And two weeks ago, one of my um, great opportunities was to speak to Buckeye Girls State. And I tried to speak about things that I thought might make a difference in their lives. I, th I talked about the opportunities that come with being a citizen of this great United States of America. But I also talked about the obligations that come along with it. I talked about dreaming big dreams and having the courage to fulfill those dreams. But the main point that I wanted to get across to each one of those young women in the audience that day was that they should do whatever they choose to do with passion. John Glenn has spent a lifetime embodying all of these ideals. And as his name adorns this airport, it certainly is appropriate to recognize that. For many travelers, an airport symbolizes excitement and adventure and the possibilities of what is to come. And I believe John Glenn also represents excitement, adventure, and the possibilities yet to come. So it's great to be a part of this. It's great to be an, a part of the honor with your family here to recognize not only you, but all of the sacrifices and your service to the great state of Ohio and the United States of America. So congratulations on an incredible career that you spent every day serving Americans and Ohioans all for the better good. Senator Glenn, congratulations. Ohio's two United States Senators, Senator Sherrod Brown and Senator Rob Portman, are busy with legislative duties in Washington, but they have been good enough to share a few words about this event on video, so please turn your attention again to the video screen. I'm Sherrod Brown. It's a privilege to serve as a United States Senator. I was nine years old in the morning of February 20th, 1962, when I sat with my parents in Mansfield, Ohio, glued to the television, watching John Herschel Glenn Jr. become the first American to orbit the Earth. The flight of Friendship 7, the courage of our friend John Glenn, inspired generations of new scientists, engineers, and aviators. It launched a new era of discovery for our country. It reaffirmed our faith in our country, in our, in, uh, in, in our own destiny to, in the words of President Kennedy, solve these mysteries and solve them for the good of all mankind. Throughout his extraordinary life, John Glenn remained humbled by his patriotism in his small town Ohio roots, the son of a school teacher and a plumber. He remained grounded by his love for his wife, his childhood sweetheart, Annie. In fact, over the decades, knowing John and Annie, I think their love for each other is the only thing, thing that may have exceeded his love of flying and being behind the wheel, if you'll say that. I'll never forget going to, when Connie and I went to dinner with John and the whole family on the 50th anniversary of the night before the Friendship, the 50th anniversary of the Friendship 7 flight. The valet at the restaurant in Columbus, in the Columbus German Village restaurant, brought their car around. Annie and their long since grown up children all piled in. Annie in the front seat, uh, his son and daughter now in their 60s in the back seat, 
and John, of course, getting behind the wheel. Some things just don't change. Today's ceremony is a fitting tribute to a man who's given so much to our state and to our nation for this airport to bear his name. John Glenn embodies the best in our country, service, sacrifice, optimism, a sense of adventure, a dedicated dedication to something greater than himself, a passion for serving the common good. And now generations of Ohioans and visitors from all over the world will pass through these doors, will see the name of this true patriot. And I look forward every time I fly in or out of Columbus that I'm visiting, stopping in, leaving from, or coming into the John Glenn International Airport. Hi, I'm U.S. Senator Rob Portman. Thanks to Elaine Roberts for making today's event possible and for working hard all year round uh, on behalf of Central Ohio. I also want to thank Speaker Cliff Rosenberger and the entire Ohio General Assembly for their effort to honor a great Ohioan and a friend of mine, Senator John Glenn. It was only half a century after two brothers from Dayton invented the first flying machine that a Marine Corps officer from Muskingum County named John Glenn became the first American to actually orbit the Earth. Amazing. A half century later, Port Columbus continues this Ohio tradition of aviation excellence, serving more than 6.8 million passengers every year, employing more than 33,000 Ohioans, huge economic impact on central Ohio. I think it's fitting that this incredible airport, which is part of one of the largest foreign trade zones in the country, should be named after an American hero like John Glenn. Uh, Senator Glenn and I have become friends over time. Uh, he's been an inspiration to me in public service. Uh, I now am in the United States Senate where he was, um, but I had the chance to work with him when I was in the House of Representatives on a lot of projects together. Uh, he focuses on results, and that's what I respect most about him. I've also had the privilege of getting to know him through the Glenn School of Public Affairs at Ohio State University. I had the honor of co-teaching uh, four courses there. I'm now on the advisory uh, committee and have been for some time. And uh, John Glenn continues to chair that board and does a terrific job in moving that institution forward. Uh, we're, we're now a college, uh, thanks to John Glenn's hard work and uh, going up and up in our rankings in terms of being one of the best public affairs schools in the country. And of course, I've got to mention uh, Annie Glenn. She is uh, amazing. Uh, I think John Glenn would be the first to say that he could not have accomplished all that he has without Annie at his side. Uh, and as Annie knows, uh, and John knows, they serve as a model for Jane and for me. We congratulate you both today and to everyone at John Glenn Columbus International Airport. Godspeed, John Glenn. Look forward to seeing you soon. I'm also delighted to share with you on behalf of Senator Portman that he has arranged for the publication in the congressional record of a proclamation in honor of Senator Glenn for this occasion. I have it here and I'm going to share it with my colleagues in the airport board and with Senator Glenn later. So thank you, Senator Portman. Uh, I'm delighted to say that uh, our pre Senate president here in Ohio, Keith Faber, has, been, has uh, managed to join us. I'm delighted that you could make it, and thank you for rearranging your schedule for that. So please help me uh, welcome President Faber. He played such an important role in ushering this through the Senate and getting it to the governor for signature. It's an honor to be here, uh, John and Anne. It, it's a privilege to play, play tribute to you today. Ohio is a state of opportunity, a place for our citizens are proud to call home. And you have played a pivotal role in helping our state soar above the rest. Today we are here to honor John Glenn by putting his name on this airport. But make no mistake, this is about much more than John Glenn's contribution to aviation and space exploration, as I'm sure you've heard. It's about his lifelong service to Ohio, and to our country. Senator, you have inspired millions of Ohioans to be the best they can be, to put duty above self, and to love their country and their fellow man. You have encouraged us to dream big and to keep our gaze and focus skyward as we work to make those dreams a reality. May the rest of us here today continue to be good stewards of your legacy, and may God bless you and your family, and may we all remember every time we pass through this great airport of the service that you put for your country, for your state, and for your fellow community. Thank you.
I think that most of you know that our airport is governed by a unique and highly successful collaboration of the City of Columbus and Franklin County. This renaming effort has enjoyed the strong support of both the city and county leadership. So I'm honored to welcome to the podium now the Mayor of Columbus, Ohio, Mayor Andy Ginther. What a great day in the city of Columbus. We are so excited to have you all join us here today as we pay tribute and acknowledge an American icon, a great American patriot, veteran, U.S. Senator, father, husband. We are delighted that America's Opportunity City will have a very special name attached to it for generations to come. I say to Annie and the Glenn family, thank you. Thank you for sharing and supporting an American legend and someone that has done so much for folks in this community. The city is represented here today. I know Councilmember Stenziano is here, Councilmember Mitch Brown, we have former Mayor Lashutka that's joined us as well uh, as a sign of our commitment and acknowledgement of all that Columbus's adopted son has done uh, for our great city. I've told this story many times to Senator Glenn and Annie, but I've got to tell it one more time. All the great leaders that he has served with and dealt with from around the world, there was one in particular pretty close to me that had a role to play. Her name was Nellie McMullen, and she worked at the B.F. Goodrich plant in Akron. She got to work on John Glenn's spacesuit before he orbited the Earth. She was my grandmother, and Senator John Glenn went and met with the employees of B.F. Goodrich, and they knew from the moment they connected with him that he would always have their best interests at heart. A man that walked with kings and leaders from around the world, but those employees, those hardworking Americans, knew that this great airman, pilot, astronaut, and U.S. Senator would always be in their corner. Godspeed, John Glenn. Now I'd like to uh, ask you to join me in welcoming the other half of that wonderful collaboration, which is, uh, who is Commissioner O'Grady, John O'Grady, who's here on behalf of the Franklin County Commission. Well, good morning. It's an honor to be here today as we rename this airport after an American hero, but certainly one of the greatest Ohioans of all time. Um, as the son of the former chairman of the Ohio Democratic Party, you can imagine that I have known the Glens for a long, long time. And he asked me earlier if I was still a young man. I said, well, I'm 52. I feel pretty young. But I've literally known them for all 52 of those years. And as a young boy, I, along with a few of my sisters, had the pleasure of being babysat by Annie Glenn uh, at their home on Old Post Road, which is down the street from where I live now. As I grew older, each time I went to the senator's office on business, Annie was there. And she would always ask me as soon as she saw me how my mother was. Now I'm the youngest of 12 children, and I think she was just really worried about my mom. Um, but I understood from the earliest years that she was a really big fan of my mother, and so that always made me a really big fan of Annie Glenn. Uh, any one of the senator's accomplishments would be considered remarkable for a lifetime. But a life like this that includes all that he has done and accomplished and lived is truly astounding. What really makes John Glenn a hero in my mind, though, is his public service. From his time in the military, his time in the U.S. Senate, all the way through to the John Glenn College of Public Affairs. So it's entirely fitting that we're here today to rename Port Columbus. 
Senator Glenn's story has always been about freedom and the future. John Glenn International Airport, the Columbus John and Glenn International Airport will represent those things for millions of flyers for decades to come. So I want to recognize my colleague, Commissioner Paula Brooks, who's here with us today. And I want to thank Speaker Rosenberger for helping us to make this happen. And I want to congratulate the people of Central Ohio on the name of their new airport. Most of all, though, congratulations, thank you, and appropriately, Godspeed, John Glenn. Thank you so much, Commissioner O'Grady. You know, in today's world, which is filled with a lot of grumpy stories about security screenings and overbooked flights, uh, it's really easy to lose sight of the wonder of flying. So let's step back a minute from the flight staff status apps and the baggage fees and think about the human side of flying, both the accomplishment of human flight as well as the physical and emotional thrill of flying. There's mathematics and aerodynamics, there are stars above and sparkling cities below, and there is, if you're ready for it, a fair amount of swooping and soaring. Flying is also adventure, exploring the unknown. It offers a sense of purpose and progress. It signals the relentless ambition of human curiosity, and ultimately it's a symbol of strength and freedom, something bigger and bolder than ourselves. It's fitting then that our airport be renamed after an eight-year-old boy who became hooked on flying after riding in an open cockpit biplane with his father. A high schooler who begged his dad to stop right here in Columbus to watch planes anytime the family traveled from New Concord to the state capitol. A young man who became decorated as a fighter pilot and a premier test pilot a man who became an American icon when he broke the cross-country speed record, and a hero when he became the first American to orbit Earth. A husband, father, a grandfather, who at the age of 77 became the oldest person to venture into space and who continued to pilot his own plane until the age of 90. John Glenn himself is a symbol of the possibility of flying an example of what unwavering Midwestern determination and dogged hard work can lead to, and a testament to the spirit of adventure and accomplishment that our city, our region, our state, and our airport embraces. Please join me in welcoming Senator John Glenn. Okay. Well, I can, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all very, very much. And this is indeed a great honor today and one that I never really expected to have. This is quite a thing to have a great big city airport like this named after you. And uh, I appreciate that very much. Now, Annie and I go back a long ways with this airport. We when I was a boy, we grew up about 70 miles straight east of here in New Concord. And when we would come to Columbus, I would always prevail upon my parents to stop by the airport before we were driving, when we were driving back toward, toward Zanesville and New Concord. And uh, it was to stop over here at the by the old, what is still the old tower that is still sitting over in the southeast corner of the field, and uh, stand along the fence there and watch the airplanes. And there weren't as many of them then as there are now. And uh, uh, it was something that I was fascinated with. And uh, the airliners of the day were the old DC-3, which was the standard airliner. And there was only one airline in Columbus then, and that was TWA, which stood at that time for Transcontinental and Western Air, later to become Transworld Airlines. And it was a, uh, we'd watch those planes come and go, but it was 
later on when we were in college and and the the uh, day I remember very well was the day of of Pearl Harbor and that changed the whole course of things and after that then through the through World War II and the Korean War there were many times when we had tearful well tearful departures or homecoming at that old terminal over there that still sits in the southeast corner of the airport. So we have a lot of, of wonderful emotional memories of that time period. And I remember very well the very first time I ever flew on an airline coast to coast and it was on those, it was on TWA on those old, one of those old DC-3 airplanes. And I remember the route, I remember part of it, I hope I don't forget some of it, but the route went from, to get to the west coast from Columbus on the airlines was you went from Columbus to Indianapolis, to uh, St. Louis, Kansas City, Dallas, El Paso, Albuquerque, and Los Angeles. And it took 24 hours to get there, something we, we find almost ridiculous these days when we have direct service. Some of my, my son and his family ride occasionally from their home out in California uh, near Oakland, Oakland to Columbus, direct flights back and forth. So things have changed a lot since those days. And later when I was in the Senate, then Annie and I wanted to keep flying and we bought a Beechcraft Baron which we ba we based in Columbus here out of Lane Aviation right down the flight line here. Uh, Frank Lane had was one of the first fixed base operators here in Columbus and so we flew our own plane in and out of here uh, several hundred hundreds of times. But it came a time when I was getting a little older and I thought I would set an objective, objective to fly until I was 90. And I thought if I could just maintain physical flight condition up to that time, that would be pretty good. Well, and that's the way it worked out. At 90, we finally sold the airplane. When I was 90, we sold the airplane, but, and it was good because uh, as you get older, there are difficulties begin to creep up on you physically that uh, I had problems with like a lot of old folks do. Uh, my sight, I had a small stroke and I had the macular degeneration which has affected my eyesight. And I only have about, oh, I only have maybe about uh, uh, a fourth or a third of my vision left that I used to have. So if some of you today were friends that I haven't seen for a while, if when you came up to me here I didn't immediately recognize you, that's the reason I, my vision is not what it used to be. But that's something that happens, happens as we get older. So. So uh, we were able, though, to be part of that history from the days when we were kids down in New Concord, uh, be part of the history of this airport and watch how it has expanded. And, and uh, in the meantime, uh, I was in the two wars in World War II and in the Korean War and went in and out of here many times uh, under orders going back and forth uh, to the Pacific uh, during those those war years. So, you know, I, I think uh, there were a couple of little stories I might uh, uh, tell briefly. The they talk about it. Uh, your as you get older, your faculties dim somewhat, and uh, you get uh, less understanding, perhaps of of everything immediately as you have been accustomed to. 
and they tell the story about the the three old gentlemen who are walking down the street and one of them in a loud voice so that the others would would hear okay said it's windy and the second one looked at him and said oh no it's thursday <laughs> and the third one looked at him and said oh me too let's go get a beer <laughs> so you have to adjust as 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 time as time goes on but with my sight being what it is i cannot drive anymore or read and so maybe it's it's lucky because there's another little story too about the elderly gentleman who started to drive downtown and he's gone about 10 minutes and he gets a call on the car radio and it's his wife and she says Oh, Fred, please be careful because I just saw on TV that there's a car driving the wrong way on the freeway. And he said, there's not one, there are hundreds of them. <laughs> so as you get old, you do have to adjust. And I just thought those illustrate the point a little bit. But it is a problem on this, this uh, when you can no longer drive or read the newspaper, and when your eyesight is bad, when you only have a portion of your, of your former vision, it means you really have to adjust. And so we've, uh, we've tried to do that. Annie paid a little bit, they paid a little bit of tribute to Annie earlier, and I would back that up. Uh, Annie and I have been married for for uh, 73 years, and that's <laughs> so that's a, it's a long time, but uh, we. <laughs> but I've been able to bear it, you know. <laughs> but anyway, it is a real pleasure to have all of you here and. And so many of you here that I, I know that, and I'm sorry that my sight is such that I am not uh, maybe as conversant as I once was, but it's a real pleasure to be here and to accept this great honor. And it is a great honor to me to have this field uh, with my name on it. It's not just that, though. As was mentioned earlier, one of the things that I think is most important about something like this, other than just honoring me, is the fact that it may draw attention for some of our young people and whet their interest and, and, and develop their interest in knowing that they in their time can do as many new things as, as have been done in aviation and in flying in the past and to develop even new ways of, of uh, having people to, uh, to fly and to carry on commerce as we do with this great airport. So uh, thank you all very, very much for being here today and, and uh, uh, I appreciate all of you coming out and it's an honor that I accept humbly and and uh, but with great gratitude uh, because it means a lot to uh, have this field that we've been associated with for such a long time to have this have a closer relationship with this field so for all the nice words and the kind words that have been said this morning thank you all very much and thank you all for being here thank you very much so much, Senator Glenn. Boy, he's taller than I am. Uh, <laughs> we have spoken a great deal today, Senator, about our desire to honor you. 
But let me say that equally, you've given us a great honor to share your name with us. As John Glenn Columbus International Airport, our airport's name will signify courage, service, ambition, leadership, adventure, and of course, friendship. We will do our best to live up to your fine example. I'd like to ask my colleague, Vice Chair of the Board, uh, Bill Heifner, to join me. Bill is an engineer and he's much better at counting than I am. So we are going to ask all of you to join us in counting down and we're going to unveil the new name of our airport. Bill? Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. Let's get out of the way. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. Please stick around, look at the sign, uh, talk to your friends. It's a great day. Enjoy our airport. Thank you.